How's it going everyone? We had quite the sell off inside of the market today and I know many of you had questions. What happened today and what happens next? So let's first talk about what happened today. So we had Fitch that came out and gave the US a downgrade for their overall credit rating. It went from being AAA down to a double A plus. This is the first time that it has changed since 1994. So this is very significant and it's part of the reasons why we had the sell off. So as far as what happens next, so we want to figure out what are the banks, what are the hedge funds doing, what is their reaction. So what they tend to do, they start selling off risky assets and start putting into safer assets. That could be things like bonds. So keeping that in mind, you're going to see that there's going to be a lot of volatility ahead and you want to make sure you're prepared for that. But with that said, we're going to be taking a look at SPY, Triple Q, and as well as IWM so you can find some trading opportunities to the upside and as well as for the downside. And then when all of that is done, we'll be going into the final thought. Let's get started off with Triple Q. So it ended up closing today at 374.39 being down 2.19%. The low of the day was at 373.13 and then the high of the day was at 379.26. So right away when I take a look at this chart, you could see that we came into an area where we could potentially have some buyers. So with that said though, if we zoom in even closer on the chart, you could see that we have some previous resistance here hanging around at this 372 to this 373 area. So no surprises why we were able to find support there overall for today. But what happens if Triple Q decides to fall below 373.13? Well, we have a gap that needs to be filled right here around this 368.68 area. So that's something that you want to add to your notes because if we get down there, again, it's either we break down further or we could have some buyers that may decide to step in after that gap fill. Now, what if we were looking for a move to the upside from Triple Q? So you can see here, I drew a horizontal line right at this 375 and a half area. If we get a break above this level, then the next move I'd be expecting would be around 377. We had a hard time breaking above this 375 and a half area. We are using a two hour chart. So that is why I feel it is very significant going into Thursday. That break above 77. And if we can get up even further, then we start talking about 379 and as well as 380. 380 is a psychological area, one thing to keep in mind. But in my personal opinion, if it does get back up to 377 and it can close around that range, I would be quite impressed. And if you are trading options, all you really need is a one point move. So that is what triple Q looks like to me, that 375 and a half area, please remember it. It also did serve as previous support, as you can see on the chart as well. So let's see what it does going into Thursday. Looking at SPY, it closed the day at 450.13, being down 1.39%. On the low where it tested was at 449.35 and then on the high was at 453.52. So with that said, the low where we had at 449.35, let's look at the chart even closer. So you could see right here, this is an area where we have bounced from. So for me to go bearish on SPY and to continue to see some more downside, it would have to fall below this 449 level. If it breaks below 449, SPY has a gap to fill right here around 446 and a half. So that's something that you want to keep in mind if you decide to trade SPY and you have a bearish sentiment about it. Now, as far as where do we have that level that SPY needs to break to see, okay, you know what? We could have a move to the upside. So it's right here at 451.42. So we can get that break above 451.42. That's where we start talking about 453 and then seeing if it can make a move to 454 to 455. If it's able to get to around 453, I would think that is quite the accomplishment, but you want that break above 451.42. If we go back further, you can see this was an area of support as well, and it's bounced from this area already. So having that happen and having that break above that resistance level, then I think that is very key to see if we can get some further move to the upside. Looking at IWM, it closed at 195.11, being down 1.36%. The low of the day was at 194.09, and then the high of the day was at 196.09. So taking a look at our two hour chart, just similar to like SPY and as well as Triple Q, we had that bounce off a critical support area. We have bounced off this area in the past as well. It also was previous resistance. So that's why this 194.09 level was one of those areas where having that bounce was very important. But what happens if we decide to break below it? 
and we decide to break below it, then IWM can come down here to 193. A break below 193, IWM has a gap that needs to be filled right here around 190.05. I'm not saying it's going to get down there, but if it does break below 193, we could easily start coming down to 192 and as well as for the high 191 area. So what are we looking for for IWM to show some strength and make a move back to the upside after selling off? So that key area is going to be at 195.75, which I recognize on this two hour time frame. If we get that break above that 195.75, then we want to challenge the high of the day at 196.09. A break above 196.09, that's where I could see IWM making that move, wanting to get back to 197, and then seeing if it can get to around 198. But I'm looking at 197 to 197 and a half. But again, for strength, you want that break above 195.75. If IWM cannot get above this level, that is definitely not a good sign, and we could start seeing a rejection and breaking through the low of the day that it had today. So for my final thoughts and how the rest of this week could potentially play out, we have to remember we have Apple and as well as Amazon that's going to be releasing earnings tomorrow inside of the after hours. If we end up seeing Apple showing a lot of strength, I'm definitely going to be looking forward to going long in the market going into Friday. The last time Apple released earnings the next day, I must say it was quite the green day for not only me, but also a lot of members inside of the discord. But at the end of the day, we have to trade off the level. Levels. We have to understand where is their weakness and where is strength. And that is why I cover it in this video. So if you're going to be trading options and so on, you could definitely use this video as a resource for you. And if you need a bit more help or you just want to be surrounded around a community of traders, then you could join us inside of the private discord as well. I hope you found this video helpful. Let's see what this market gives us going into Thursday.